All right, so we are rolling, folks. All right, so again, 206.com. My name is Mark Morin, so everybody knows. Um, hey, Mark. Hey, hello. Mark. hello. Hey, Mark. <laughs> so I have the cast and crew here of Last I Heard. Um, and yeah, a little phone out there. So we're recording here. And so first question I wanted to ask for you, sir, is where did the idea for this movie come from? I just thought it was a really unique story to tell, and I was really excited to watch it going into it, especially getting Paul Sorvino to play that particular character. So where did this come from? <clears throat> well, originally, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's actually a, a two-part answer, but I'm going to try to make it as fast <laughs> as possible to okay. give everybody else the opportunity to speak. Yep. Um, I think first it was... I wanted to write something that was undeniably mine, mm -hmm. uh, where I knew the world, I knew the characters, and, and no one could say, you know, that would never happen right. because uh, I'm pretty intimate with those neighborhoods. So I know I'm from New York. Okay. Um, and then secondly, um, which, which sort of uh, wishing that that idea, that great idea, would come into my head. I'm watching a Discovery ID thing on cable, and and it was about this uh, this FBI agent Jack Falcone who infiltrated the Gambino family in the Bronx. And he talks about a guy, uh, a, a mobster, a made member of, of, of that family coming home from prison. And he was trying to reclaim his rackets, not knowing that there were informants and FBI and surveillance all involved. And he said, this guy was pitiful. Mm -hmm. And that was the one word that kind of stuck in my head. And I said, wait a minute, you know, there, this is a character. This is sort of a, uh, a post-mafia movie, right. if you will. Um, a, a, a contemporary take on on what's going on today, and yeah. and how somebody like that, who's coming home from prison after twenty plus years, has to navigate a more much more progressive society. Right. Perfect. So two of the scenes that really stuck out to me in the movie, dealing with um, it was Joe was his name, right? His character was actually the two mainly dealing with you as the daughter, the park bench scene. And then the dinner scene, which you were involved in as well. To me, those were very much turning points in his realization of the world he was in. So I guess for you and for the two of you, I just wanted to kind of pick your brains a little bit about how those scenes really came about, how you prepared for them, because there were some pretty powerful emotional scenes, and especially at the dinner when he kind of came back at you guys with his own question, I was like, oh my gosh, this is, this is pretty amazing stuff. So if the three of you specifically could just talk on that, those two particular scenes a little bit. I'll let Rita go first. Renee, okay. props. Okay, Rita. Um, the park scene was great because it, it was, what, a 12 or 14 page scene? It felt like that. It was about about a ten page scene. Yeah. yeah, for cinema, that's a long scene. Right. You know, but it was so well written mm -hmm. that um, I think, you know, as an actor, I didn't really have to do much because the writing was there. So mm -hmm. the emotion and the arc and and um, it was quite cold that day. Mm -hmm. It was very cold. Um, I remember, I remember that. Whenever mm -hmm. I watch the scene, I'm like, oh, so cold that day. Mm -hmm. We had to pretend not to be cold. Right. So. Um, Basically, I think I think it was so well written that that's that's kind of what made it flow, mm. and also you know, every day that I came to work with Paul Sorvino, uh, he was so lovely. He was he almost became like a father figure to me. I kind of fell in love with him by the end of the shoot. He would always say, "Remember, just trust the work," uh -huh. you know. <laughs> and and then of course we have I always say David Rodriguez is an mm. actor's director because mm. you feel very safe and very free, mm -hmm. and you know he's very quiet, he's very mellow, he's very chill, so there's kind of a, a safety net and everything kind of flows because you know if, if your director's yelling and is crazy, you know, and there are directors out there that are yeah. like that. Michael Bay. <laughs> From whatever we won't name names. <laughs> <laughs> I named it, I threw it up. I didn't <laughs> say that, Michael, it must yeah. have been Michael. That was all, all me. Anything yeah. you need me to work on. Right. But, um, sorry. <laughs> but, you know, That's just what I've heard, say. I'm sorry. <laughs> and that, that was really great. And I think, I think what was fun for the dinner scene for me, mm -hmm. and then um, Andrea can say, that mm -hmm. was a very playful, almost, it almost felt like an improvisational, even though it wasn't improvised, mm -hmm. that whole, that whole evening, you know, that we were shooting that felt very playful and fun and light. And there was a lot of just listening and reacting and being in the moment. And that was a really fun, I really enjoyed that. Thanks. Yeah, that was what was nice about work, working with Paul because he's Meisner trained. Uh -huh. and, and so am I. And mm -hmm. we, we really connected on that level where it's about working off of your partner, about mm -hmm. listening really, really well. 
and um, and he he noticed that about me right away, which was which was nice, you know. Yeah, right. Um, and but for me, the the most important thing was just coming in there with the circumstances. What are the circumstances? Mm -hmm. Meeting him sort of for the first time with, right. with the truth out on the table. But and, you guys tricked him going into yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, and you know just just working off of each other. That was the most important mm -hmm. thing because. This, the circumstances were, were what they were. Right. So, so you said that it was really easy to work based on the material. How much of the dialogue and the written words on the page actually ended up, and how much freedom did you give them to improvise a little bit or kind of feel the moment and you know, maybe make subtle changes as it developed? Well, I mean, I think the, the, as a writer, the best compliment is when your actors actually think that they were improvising. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> but the reality is, is that we were probably, you know, eighty percent on book. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of these guys are, you know, they they're veterans. I mean, mm -hmm. they've been doing it for a long time. Right. I think, you know, I don't even want to add up the years of how long everybody was. <laughs> everybody's been acting. Years. It's probably a couple, yeah. you know, a few centuries, you know, <laughs> yeah. of experience. But you know, look, everybody brings. Uh, something unique mm -hmm. uh, to the table. Every right. actor did, you know, and and you know, you as Paul Sorbino said in a Q and A uh, yesterday, mm -hmm. you you add certain actors add certain lines to make it their own, to make it feel comfortable for them. Okay. But at the end of the day, um, I was fortunate enough to have spent the time to develop the script with some pretty, you know, uh, um, significant people. Um, in, in the business to help me get it to that point so that it was all on the page and it was easy for the actors to embrace and deliver and and react you know with each other with with a with relative ease right um, so that you know it was it, it was mostly on book definitely you'd mentioned the uh, history of the cast and how much experience is there I want to get back to that in a second sure. but going back to the park bench scene to me was like I said earlier was so powerful and it got to me a little bit too just by the end of it when just he's, a little bit it, it takes a lot to give me you know, that, that far into a movie you know so uh, yeah you gotta you gotta keep that sense of it but just when he was just sitting there and he broke down after you walked away like I guess not necessarily that specific moment but did you spend a lot of time with him, with mr. Sorino preparing for those moments or how does that develop? No, what was really great about about this role is that we both kind of came in, we didn't have any rehearsal, we mm -hmm. had no rehearsal. Um, and that's what was really great. We really, it, it just was so, like, or I hate to say the word organic because it's mm -hmm. overused, but it was just so in the moment and organic and I think we both had enough stuff to within us to work with mm -hmm. as actors that, you know, once we just connected and started talking and then you have a great script, then all of that stuff just happens, you know. Right. Like it just, it, it just comes to fruition if mm. you're if you allow it to and just be in the moment, you know. And I think, for me, it, this was a wonderful experience because I think for the first time, I let it really let go, and I said, I don't care what kind of performance I do, you know, as long as as I can be as honest as I can right. and and relaxed. And I've and I've always been a bit of a neurotic actor, and for this shoot, it wasn't like that. It was just. <laughs> And that part of that is is the director and also Paul Servino. What are you laughing? <laughs> Just the neurotic actor. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. A neurotic actor. Uh, person. Person. <laughs> no, person. Anyway. Okay. So it was just, you know, it was, um, I think it was sometimes all the elements come together. You have right. great writing, you have good act, you know, the acting, mm -hmm. and, and, and the stars kind of align. It's not raining, right. and something happens, and everyone kind of listens and are honest, and, and then it's theirs. Right. But also, you know, back to the just the cast in general, mm -hmm. their, the skill and all the years of, of training and experience um, allow the actors to be able to relax under those circumstances. A lot of people think, oh, um, acting is uh, learning your lines mm -hmm. and putting on a costume and just saying the lines. Right. But uh, an everyday layperson can't just pick up a script and just say the, say someone else's words right. as if they were their own. I wouldn't know what to do. Yeah, and, <laughs> and a lot of people see it seems so effortless and mm -hmm. so easy, but it's like years and years yeah, right. training. of training, yeah, training. And, yeah. and doing it over and over. And so also, you, too, Dave, the, the way that he cast the film is mm -hmm. that each person was just so perfectly cast. Right. But I said this yesterday, it's just like, you know, he planted it mm -hmm. and just you let the flowers bloom. You yeah. know, everyone just is really... 
knows those characters and knows right. how to bring them out. So yeah. that's and that, that's exactly what I felt when I was watching it. It was like every time somebody like made their first appearance on the screen, I'm like, how did he put these this amazing cast together for being such? Um, I mean this in a great way, a more intimate, you know, smaller scale film. Um, just the, the casting to me was, was one of the most impressive things. So uh, speaking of the casting, I just want to, maybe each of you can touch on it. I know I feel like I've been just going your direction the whole time. So we'll, we'll start back this way. Uh, how did you get involved in the project and like where did it come about for you to take each of your roles? Oh, starting with Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, Dave and I are best friends, so oh. we, uh, we talk a lot. And uh, so when he's developing a project, you know, if there's something that makes sense, I'll, I'll be a part of it. I've done right. three of his features and a couple of other projects that he's been involved with. So we, we, we work together a lot. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that, that's, oh, this one, yeah, but this one was almost, this one was tough because it was, there was a scheduling thing. It was, you know. Yeah, you were on in play, he was on in plain yeah, sight yeah. at the oh, time. Okay. And, and it, it actually right. almost worked out. We had to push a week for Michael, for Rappaport. Okay. And then it just so happened that because we pushed that week, right. he was done with Last I Heard, uh, with uh, In Plain Sight. Okay. And, and then it was just, just all fell into place. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So sometimes just the puzzle pieces fit together for him. Yeah. It's amazing yeah. how, how that works, you know, yeah. how conflicts happen. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, so being a good friend, um, was there anything that really struck out to you about this uh, screenplay? That aside from other projects you guys have worked on together? Yes, I mean, I, love the, I just love the story mm -hmm. from the beginning. We actually did a, a reading of it a few years ago. And, uh, you know, I think there was, we did a couple of readings, you know, and, and, you know, discovered a lot of stuff at that point. And, you know, we collaborate and, mm -hmm. you know, asked me to read something, to look at it. So, but uh, I, I've, I've been involved in the project, I think, early on. And I'm, big fan and a supporter and, and uh, so, you know, uh, I'm there to dive in whenever he says Right. Dive. So, you're, so you're in from the get-go then? Yeah. Cool, that's great. So whoever else wants to, to go I like to go yeah. next. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go because you mentioned the stage reading and that's actually when I, I saw it. My father mm -hmm. did the stage reading uh, and Paul mm -hmm. did the stage reading and so I went to the theater to see it mm -hmm. actually with with my friend Britt's brother, Paul, we went together oh, okay. and um, and watched it. And I was just so moved by the story. You know, mm -hmm. I come from New Jersey, and so I know these characters, oh, you know, right. Italian. And I have a cousin mm -hmm. who uh, who had to, I don't want to give too much away, but did this, basically the scene that happened on the park bench, she had to oh. do with her Italian father, my oh, uncle wow. Sonny, who drove a cab, who was, you know, okay. probably reacted very similar to Paul's character <laughs> right, about this right. news. Wow. So I just thought this is an amazing story. Mm -hmm. and. Um, and then years later, I was at a party with Dave, and I, I it was like the second question I said to him was like, "Happy New Year!" And whatever happened with that script, oh. you know, where are we at? And where are you at with it? And um, and so I came on board, and I said, uh, "Let's let's do this. Let's mm -hmm. find financing, and let and I want to be involved." And you know, and he offered me the role of Michelle, which you know was great. And right. and, uh, and she's a hell of a producer as well. Yeah, she's oh, a nice. hell of Not a only is she a great actor, but she's yeah. a hell, a hell of, a of a producer. Multiple hats. It, it's just yeah. about believing in something, you know, right. and and. Uh, and and I believe in Dave, you know. Mm -hmm. I believe in, I believe I believed in the script, and mm -hmm. you know. And I was just so proud to be a part of it. So that's how I got involved, and I was right. lucky enough to be in it and and watch every scene. Uh, scene. And you know, as great of a writer as Dave is, what he does as a director is, is magical. And I've worked right. with some incredible directors, but he he trusts the actor, mm -hmm. and just like what Paul said, you know, trust the work. And and Dave did that and allowed us to just the freedom to just you know, say the lines and just bring this whole thing to life. So it was an right. incredible experience. Well, that's great. Who's next? Well, actually, it goes back to the that staged reading is how I got involved okay. years ago. But I've known Billy for, yeah. I've known Billy longer than longer any than anybody. Than anybody. Yeah. Oh, wow. We actually yeah. uh, almost grew up together. We, we met while he was still in high school. Okay. Um, so, uh, you know, I... Uh, I wasn't on Facebook at the time because I don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe it. Right. <laughs> and all that stuff. Staying away from my, the social media. Yeah, my yeah. girlfriend was like, hey, you know, Dave says here on Facebook is doing a stage reading out in L.A. Da, 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 da. And I was right. like, all right, I'll, finally, I'll sign up. And I got in touch with David and I went out and I did the, uh, I played, I did the narration and a couple that. of the roles oh, okay. that yeah. weren't cast. So Billy and, and Paul, you're the first original character. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, after, well, yeah, and then I said, you know, 
when this gets on its feet, which I knew it would because he has a very mm -hmm. skilled way of getting projects done and through fruition, I said, you know, I don't know if you want to have me be whatever, but I know I can nail whatever uh, right. I, I am suited for. And yeah. uh, two years later, it, well, I guess it was about, and it got done. And, and what a great cast and crew that he put together. So right. I was just excited to be involved from the stage to, to the final thing, and here we are today. So. Definitely. It sounds like kind of a theme of the movie itself. There's kind of a family organization oh, going yeah. on there. So that's great. I like that. And Mario. Oh, Mario. Andrea. Yeah. Yep, there we go. Oh, yeah, we haven't even heard from you yet. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I was uh, very fortunate to meet Dave uh, a few years before um, when he was working on a film called Push. And um, he visited the, the deli, and two years after, he, he, uh, a friend of mine, Ignacio Panepinto, I'm sorry, I'm a little nervous, <laughs> my first uh, little interview here, uh -huh. told me the good news that they wanted to shoot a movie inside the deli okay. where Which is I work. his deli. He owns the right. deli. He owns the deli. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 40, right. 40 year family. So, so that's, that's well, his business. I was going to say that's obviously it's an actual location. Oh, yeah. You're actually probably very familiar with the yeah. location then, aside from that. Cool. And uh, along with that, uh, I also got a gift, a blessing where I had the opportunity to be a part of this great movie. Right. And uh, he I plays the Sicilian gentleman. Right. Okay. Yeah. The, the, yep. he, speaks. So he speaks the language. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's right. Perfect yep. fit. Yeah. Perfect. Serino. The yep. movie itself was very. I could uh, relate to it right. because um, it's filmed in Middle Village, a mm -hmm. lot of it, and it has, you know, the authentic. It's very authentic to, you know, to my everyday life. Right. You know. So, when I was given the opportunity to work with uh, Paul which uh, was a lot easy for me to work with a great actor like Paul, because right. he, he led the way you know, for me to do my, my part. Uh, Definitely. And then from there, uh, you know, I find myself here. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so you, you had no idea what you were getting yourself into there, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. And, uh, now he's got a three-picture deal. Right. <laughs> right, 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 right. Nice. But, uh, you know, it's just a great, uh, great experience. Um, yep. Just living the moment. And uh, Perfect. I take it for what it is. It's, uh, oh, that's great. It's all about the moment and experience and uh, being around, you know, uh, great artists, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, that's what I love to do. Right. And uh, that's it. Basically, cool. uh, can't say anything else. <laughs> yeah. No, that's great. Thank you very yeah, much. I, I thank Dave yeah. for everything, you know. Right. Perfect. Thank you. And Andrea, I think. Uh, yes. Um, I, I got a call. My agents got a call from some guy named Dave Rodriguez. <laughs> right. <laughs> talking about some film named Last I Heard. And uh, he, there was a, a role he wanted me to play and mm -hmm. wanted me to read the script. What was this guy? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But I, re I read the script um, okay. and I loved it. And what I loved about it was the fact that it was the flip side of, of, of no one has ever heard this story before. Right. That was, for me, it was what was yeah. a unique that I really found interesting and I wanted to be part of that story mm. is a, a mobster afterlife. Right. No, mm -hmm. and, and, it's, and there's so much like cliche about mobsters and, and so much... Um, uh, hype and, and sort of like fame and looking up to. You know? Right. And what I liked about the script was that he was brought down to human, human level. Right. Um, and, and that was for me a story that I thought people needed to hear mm -hmm. and would be interested in hearing. Perfect. And then of course the fact that I would be, have the opportunity to, to be in a scene with Paul Sorvino was right. a huge selling point for me. <laughs> yeah, how could you turn that down? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then it turns out, I mean, it was the first time I had ever been offered something that I didn't mm -hmm. have to audition for and oh, prove nice. myself. Right. So that was kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> she got lucky that I had just, uh, that my, one of my managers, mm -hmm. uh, I, I could not get into how to make it in America. Right. And then I started watching it again and not, and then I got into it. Okay. And then I got into, uh, 
the Louis Guzman storyline where Andrea plays his girlfriend. Okay. And I saw her in that, and I was like, holy shit, this is... Like, am I, can I use that word? Sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can. Seven seconds. Right he doesn't have to write that word. <laughs> this is just... This is funny, and this right. is cool, and, and, and she was great in it. So, And, and I also... Um, the, the the funny thing was is I because I know the Italian culture so well I thought it'd be kind of funny to give her a Latina girlfriend yeah right you know right. like wait a minute you know a little bit of twist there not yeah. only are you you know yeah yeah but anyway <laughs> <laughs> no that's great another little dig in your daddy yeah. yeah exactly all right well I'm being told to wrap it up here but can I ask one more question. Uh, and I'll try to make it quick. One thing I was really excited about during watching the movie is we're talking about the deli a minute ago. I just felt like I wanted to hang out with you guys in the deli. <laughs> so can, can you guys tell me about, like, is that something you build towards to get that kind of camaraderie going? Or, or again, is it just on the page and it's easy for you guys to adapt that into your work? Just kind of touch on that. I was talking to uh, Dave earlier. You know, I've worked with Billy. I met Billy on Dave's first movie, Push. Mm -hmm. uh, Mario I just met, but you know, Michael Rapport is an old friend. Right. Yeah, and uh, Johnny Rose Johnny Rose Beef is his nickname, John Williams. <laughs> is also an old friend. We've worked together on a couple of things. So he put us together mm -hmm. and it was just you know, he there was there's no attitudes. They were all right. buddies, we're all there very giving. I mean the stories we, you almost had to shut us up, you know. Because <laughs> we were just hanging out talking, drinking coffee. Right. I had to learn how to use his deli slicer, which we used right. yeah, yeah, pounds and pounds, pounds and plenty of prosciutto, you know. Which we ate during. And, this, you know, and then he wrote this great dialogue, you know, right. he was talking about uh, cholesterol and mm -hmm. eating fat food. <laughs> yeah, you just kind of fall into it, and that, like, mm -hmm. it was, even though, you know, you don't, I didn't know Johnny Williams at the time, or. But it's like he brought every, Paul and, and Mario and Mike. It was just like you're hanging out in the deli. You're in Queens. It's like, right. bing, 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 yep. let it go. <laughs> That's yep, how exactly. it really is. In that. It's, nice. Uh, yeah, you really got that authentic feel. Like I said, I wanted to go hang out with you guys <laughs> while I'm watching the movie. Also, I wanted to bring it back to the acting. And it's... Mm -hmm. That's where the, the, the talent and the skill and the experience comes. Right. Is that you can be effortless. able to look effortless and yeah. just bam, bam, bam off of each other, and that's right. yeah. that's experience. In Mario's case, case, he's just brilliant. He just doesn't, yeah, he doesn't need <laughs> He's <his> naturally gifted. <laughs> he opened his mouth yeah. and everybody went, whoa. Superstar in the making. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Well, it's cool. true. Even in, even in this, even in what appears to be a small role or mm -hmm. an easy role, uh, you know, there are times I know Billy and I were told, do that right? Is that mm -hmm. okay? You know, you're still concerned. You want to make sure you're authentic mm -hmm. and real. Right, right. And, uh, uh, you know, the environment is great. But, you know, I, I was just gonna, I was just thinking about a moment like where I, I was asking, I'd ask Mario, is that, what, is that how you do it? Is yeah. that what you do? Or, mm -hmm. or a local friend, uh, Iggy, I was asking right. about something. There's one line I do, I just threw in, and it was something that Iggy had said after a take, and he said, I'd smack him in his fucking teeth. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so that was something that, that one of his friends, you know, sort of responded to that scene. Right. So I threw it in, you know, he said, throw it in, so I did, so. And um, I actually used it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> and, it got, and it got a laugh. It got a big laugh. Yeah. But it is about, it, it's almost, it, it is, it does take a, a, long, a long time to sort of cultivate the ability to right. not act, if you will. You know, right. Just sort of no, that's a great thing. Yeah. And because yeah. Paul's a stage actor, too. You know, I was watching oh, okay. this yesterday. He has behaviors that I think you learn mm -hmm. from being on the stage. You know, okay. he doesn't just stand there and wait for the director to tell him something to do. He's making coffee. He's, you know, oh, doing wow. stuff. And you guys right, are like, right. here you go, light and sweet. It's like, really? Living. Like, you guys living. were, yeah, living right. in the base. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, well, I could right. sit here and talk with you guys forever, but we got to shut it down. So <laughs> thank you for thank, having Yeah, us. absolutely. Thank you, thank you everybody, thank for you. being here. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks for having us. I hope it's worth your time. So appreciate it. Yes. Thanks, Mark.